Fans. Welcome to another edition of the Peristyle Podcast on a Tuesday. We've got to talk some, of course, USC Trojan football, various topics uh, of conversation about the USC Trojan football team, NIL, the Pac-12, all that kind of stuff. Joined alongside with Chris Trevino. He's over here right next to me if you're watching live on YouTube. And if you're listening on the any of the podcasting platforms out there, we appreciate that as well. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today as we push forward towards USC spring football. Uh, Chris gave his uh, positional rank hierarchy. What was it called, Chris? What did you power call it? Power rankings. Your, the power rankings positional of each power position rankings. group. So we're going to go over that a little bit. we got to talk about the Pac-12. Is it going to die? I don't know. NIL. Crazy stuff going on. I went to two NIL events uh, this past week. And these off-season workouts, Chris, they're getting a little crazy. We want to talk about that. Uh, all that kind of fun stuff. If you have any questions or comments, you can drop us an email podcast at uscfootball.com or you can call or text us. Uh, 424 254 9141 is the number. We love to get your questions. Uh, however, you want to send them in, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to write in or call into our show. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun doing it. And uh, I have a question. You have, what's your question? Do we have audio? Do we not have audio? I'm just asking because last time we did the show, we had an audio debacle. That's true. So I just want to get off on a better foot. Yes. And save us some time. Do we have audio? Uh, Looks like we have audio. Okay. uh, That's my only question I will have for the entire show. Nice. Uh, Well, and we want to wish Chris a happy belated birthday. Uh, You went away for... Your birthday to Big Bear? Yeah, I was in, I was 31 the last time I did this show. I'm 32 <laughs> now, so I'm on the other side of 31. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to Big Bear, did some snowboarding, stayed in a cabin, got in a hot tub in the middle of the night when it was 30 degrees out. It was great. I do the hot tub in the cold is pretty fun. Um, I enjoy doing that. It's an elite experience. Yeah. I did a Montana a couple of years ago, like snow, oh. like deer. You see like deer running around. Like that was pretty cool. But yeah, Big Bear's great. Um, I haven't been there for a while. The the I went in the summer. The water levels were like super low, hmm. um, which hopefully they're not that way anymore. Yeah, I went to snowboard, got on the ice, the powder, shredded some powder. So yeah, Ooh, a little, like some still pow, a little pow. sore, still a little sore, but yeah. we're good. Well, hope you had a, jo- a great birthday. Uh, we have a semi-celebrity in the uh, chat. So Eric of Troy, he's live with us for the very first time. Uh, Long time podcast listener, uh, old friends with Harvey Hyde. So uh, Eric, thanks for joining us here and everyone else. And we got some belated birthday wishes. Uh, Happy birthday, Chrissy 10K. You're the 18K guy now, right? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it it depends what faction you subscribe to. If you're a a 10K truther or you're a... Uh, 18k conspiracy conspiracy theorist whatever you want uh i'm i'm open to every uh group of uh 10k 18k followers love it have. Hey, well, and yeah, thank you for the birthday wishes yeah, of course yeah everyone uh thanks for that for uh, and anyone who sent me a birthday wish on twitter or on the p there was two separate threads so that was fun and i got a birthday wish from someone from australia so that was pretty cool nice I did make some cupcakes. It wasn't necessarily for your birthday, Chris, but I brought just some cupcakes in here. So you know, red velvets. The red velvets. Did you slicker. did you get uh, flashbacks PTSD from, from my we... crushing <laughs> victory over you? I know that was gate? good. That was good stuff back then. Uh, man, that was a long time ago. That was back in September, we did that. Um, Isn't that the first game? Yeah, it was the first game. So um, yeah, these are good. A little chocolate chips in there. You want to try them? Some red velvet cupcakes. Last show, I had a donut waiting for me the whole time. Are you gonna? Eat and a, now you, this time, I'm gonna have a red velvet cake, red velvet cupcake waiting for me the whole time. 
So yeah. this is how I do. It. I like keep you uh, on the either you're distracted. Oh, the waft of the red velvet, so good. Oh, is they're very good. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us here. Are we just talking to Chris? We're gonna start the we got to start Tunnel Vision show the Tunnel Vision show up again. Um, we should be doing that every week. We just haven't been doing that much. But the, we're doing these kind of live, so they're kind of fun. We'll get Jack back in here. We've got spring football starting in uh, just a couple of weeks, so that should be a lot of fun. It's about two weeks away, um, or a little bit more than, I guess, well, a week and a half. March 4th is when we're supposed to start. Um, yeah, so we're going to do that. Also, want to thank our sponsor, Trader Joe's. It's been great to us uh, over the years. I just went in there uh, a couple of days ago. Chris, I don't know if you've picked up um, the salmon from in there. So the salmon's really good. They usually have a good yeah. variety, like different fillets you can buy um, in the fresh area. They have they have a bunch of frozen fish too, but I go into the the fresh salmon. Uh, my new air fryer, I kind of put that. I put it in there, a little soy, um, and it's great. I did some uh, broccoli florets and uh, from from Trader Joe's. I picked up a bag salad. It's a great uh, little lunch or dinner, but the. I've, it's funny. I've talked to a bunch of friends about. It. They're like, we really like the Trader Joe's salmon. So if you haven't tried that, that's your thing for the week. Go and uh, check out the Trader Joe's salmon. And I picked up. Uh, I think it's Angelique, uh, the Pinot Noir. I think it's eight bucks or nine bucks. Really good. Um, I like to try the different um, different wines there, but usually Pinot Noirs. Uh, but I think it's the Angelique one. Uh, go try that out too. Well, there you go. Yeah. Shout out to Salmon at Trader Joe's. <laughs> Is there, is there a Twitter handle, Salmon at Trader Joe's? There should be something like that. Um, are we going to lose our check marks? Like, what's going on with the Twitter? And now, now like, Instagram is, like, offering to buy, you know, like, buy your check mark and stuff. Like, I don't, I don't want to spend money on, like, having a mark next to your name I'm not, on social I'm media. Not, I'm not buying my... No. My uh, check. No. Silly. My tweets are my certification for being real. You do keep it real. Uh Chrissy T. But thanks uh, to Trader Joe's. Going through things um, today. So if you're watching us live on YouTube, again, thank you very much for that. You can put comments in the chat box and I will try to put them up on the screen. And if you have any questions, just put question in the front. I will uh, mark them and we'll try to check back with them later. We don't have too many questions today. I forgot to check for voicemails, but I'll do that while Chris is uh, kind of talking about, you know, whatever he's uh, ends up talking about, but these off-season workouts were leading up towards the spring practice, which is going to start on uh, what we're told is March 4th. That we did put out, let me put this up on the screen. If you remember a couple weeks ago, we put out, uh, Dave Emmerich tweeted out this spring schedule. Well, and then he deleted it, right, Chris? And uh, apparently it wasn't exactly uh, correct. So March 4th, though, it looks like it's going to be the day that spring practice starts three days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, uh, Tuesday, 30, Tuesday, Thursday afternoons and Saturday mornings. We will probably only get Lincoln Riley on Saturdays. Won't be able to watch and we won't be able to watch the whole thing. It won't be open to the public. April 15th still supposed to be the spring game and that should be open to the public. So that should be a lot of fun like it was last year. So we'll know the we should know the full schedule sometime this week, but in the meantime, as players are getting ready, uh, we're watching some of these Benny Wiley Instagram stories and some of the stories from some of the players and stuff um, in the weight room, out on the field, doing conditioning, doing footwork drills, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, well, I've got to talk to a couple of the players at, at one of these NIL events we'll get to in a minute. But uh, anything sort of standing out to you? There's a lot of new faces. We're seeing the the Dorian Singers of the world, you know, all the new transfers, Mason Cobbs, like those guys that are all kind of come into the program uh, to see them integrated with the team. Uh, it's, you know, similar to last year, but I think the core group, there's a, a stronger core group that's stuck around, um, you know, from 2022 to 2023, as opposed to what we saw 2021 to 22, where it was kind of just ripped up and new for everybody. But wanted to kind of get your thoughts, Chris, on anything that stood out to you. Nothing like super that nothing super, you know, I'm making up a word jumping out just because, you know, you only get really small snippets of, of the weight room. And I previously had not actually been following Benny Wiley on Instagram. And I just seen some of the stuff pop up on social media 
so I finally started following him and it's so fun to see when he has a new story up because you never know what you're going to see. Maybe you're seeing Zachariah Branch jump a 40 inch vertical or Jamal Muhammad bench, uh, squatting 600 pounds. It, so that's always fun not knowing what you're going to get in a Benny Wally story when it comes to sharing snippets of the weight room and conditioning stuff. So I think for fans, it's fun to see these little clips and keep building, wet their appetite until spring football really comes. And I'm sure we're going to get more hype videos going to spring this coming week and next week with, with spring camp starting. So just a nice little appetizer for bringing football back on the field. Spring football is coming up. And yeah, the fresh, the new faces, it's always great to see. You know, you get to see Keon Bars uh, benching a lot of weight. You know, the Arizona defensive tackle transfer who, you know, on paper, plug and play guy, could, it should be the starter for this, uh, the heart of this defensive line moving forward. And Jarrett Kingston, who is just a hunk of mass out there, just a big, big boy. That's why he's, you know, an NFL prospect, why he was an all Pac 12 caliber offensive tackle. The future left tackle for USC, signs point to yes. But just seeing them and, you know, the freshmen, you see all these photos of Zachariah Branch and Tacky Curtis who look like they've been in a college weight room for two plus years coming in as true freshmen. Just incredible to see. So just getting all those glimpses and little exciting little nuggets for uh, USC fans to, to chew on before, you know, the real stuff comes in the spring. Yeah, there was it's there's been some really cool videos. Uh, I think Benny Wiley's private, but if you follow him, I think he'll let you, um, you know, kind of see what some of those videos are. And then we'll see some from like Gavin Morris and uh, some other people just kind of tweeting. Now his is usually more fun, but um, it is it is kind of interesting to see everything that uh, Benny's putting out there and some of the some of the new guys like Chris was mentioning. Um, it's fun. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I got to talk to, you know, a couple of players about it. Everyone seemed to be, um, working really hard. I mean, it's not, it's, these aren't easy. And, um, I don't know if there's like extra motivation, like losing your last two games or whatever from last year. Um, however that works, but it seems like, you know, guys are, the new guys want to get integrated. Um, sometimes they want to make a, you know, a splash, uh, like mentioned bars and, you know, you know, bars, um, you know, lifting a whole bunch of weight. Uh, there was a one with Michael Jackson was putting up a whole bunch. Um, I mean, it didn't even look like a wide receiver anymore. He was just putting up some massive yeah. amounts of weight there. Uh, I wish we could, you know, see more, but it's good to get a little glimpse of sort of, uh, what's going on and seeing these new guys working out with the rest of the team. It kind of gets you excited again. Oh, we got football coming up again. Yeah. Just a tiny peek behind the curtain they're never going to pull the curtain all the way back but yeah at least we get a peek through a single lens from benny wiley's instagram so yeah recommend to follow him if you're uh you're not and you're on instagram yeah he does keep it private but i think if you're on instagram you can do that he's not really tweeting much or anything right i don't know if he does a tiktok or whatever but i think it's mostly he's a gram guy yeah he's, he's a gram. story much more simpler just hold it record boom it's up yeah. it's up and he gets some. Sometimes he'll put. They'll show the the him working out or uh, some of the other strength or staff. Or grilling. Yeah. There's been some grill shots. A little bit of that too. Yeah. Um, not as much as when, like at Aaron Osmus, when they were like just. I was just gonna say steaks. Not, not quite Aaron Osmus. Steaks level and grilling. like benching as much as you, humanly possible. Like that was kind of his story thing. Um, and we want to give a little shout out to. Uh, we have a new social media intern, Elizabeth, who's starting to do some TikToks and some Instagram stories. So if you want to follow us on TikTok or Instagram, the Peristyle is our account there. So she's kind of doing little recaps of some of these workouts and and things. And hopefully, we'll be able to do more uh, when spring football and stuff starts. So uh, kind of check that out. We got to, you know, that's your baby, though, Chris. The TikTok. We don't want to like you know step on your toes with anything there. Sure. Yeah, I don't wear sandals that often, so you're you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. But yeah, I'm excited to kick that TikTok back up in gear after the off season, you know. Was planning on TikToking I don't know if that's a verb, but posting TikToks from, you know, the end of the season, the cotton bowl, but too was painful. It? Yeah, it was like not so too painful for USC fans. No but... one's gonna like those. But it, it would have just been a bunch of people fighting in the comments, so decided to uh, take a step back from it, but we'll get back in. You know, obviously people love seeing the guys come out of the tunnel, 
you know, some just some spring interview stuff. So, yeah, more content coming to the at Peristyle TikTok. Yeah. And uh, we're going to try to do the same thing over at the uh, at the Instagram account uh, as well. We're going to talk some. I know we want to get to your, uh, you know, um, hierarchy there, your positional rankings. Stop calling it a high. <laughs> you know what a power ranking is, Ryan. Power ranking, baby. Um, but uh, before we get it, I want to get into some of this NIL stuff because it's a little bit crazy right now. Um, if you remember, USC rolled out Boulevard. Um, there were some former staffers that kind of were over there. There's some boosters that were behind it and they really were trying to back up, you know, say that this is what, you know, USC's, it wasn't going to be a collective at first. And then it was a collective plus a lot of kind of iterations of this, how it was going to go. Didn't seem to be super well received. There were some, you know, issues, you know, whoever's fault it was, whatever. It wasn't exactly working um, very well. We haven't seen them post on social media for quite a while. And uh, it's been nice, like the Boulevard, uh, people of the Boulevard staff were posting on the Peristyle over at uscfootball.com. So they were kind of giving people some information of what's been going on. We haven't seen much um, from them uh, lately. Uh, Mike Bone, we saw him kind of get defensive about uh, Boulevard when a new collective popped up. Um, yeah, a little bit uh, with uh, Student Body Right. Student Body Right. And uh, Dale Reck, the you know, longtime poster, was one of the leaders of that group. He unfortunately... Uh, had some medical issues and, and had passed away during this and that organization. Maybe it springs up again at some point, but for right now, we haven't heard anything really uh, from them. But Mike Bone was really adamant about, hey, we got to run everything through Boulevard. And wasn't even acknowledging that a new collective was popping up. And now all of a sudden, in the last week, two more new ones have come up. Um, with Boulevard essentially dead, uh, doesn't exist in its its previous form. A lot of the people that were you're calling the, it, you're calling the time. I'm gonna like time of death uh, was probably last week or a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago. Um, but it, there's a new name, uh, a new group. We wrote a, I wrote a, a lot about this in the war room. If you haven't checked out Friday's war room, I don't know if I've ever wrote as much as I did in that one. I don't know if you saw it, Chris, but a lot of it was your birthday, but a lot of stuff. Um, uh, on the collective, my thoughts on the collectives or anything. So make sure you go kind of check all that stuff out. But Boulevard will have a new face, new form, um, new format. It will be a nonprofit instead of, uh, you know, now going forward. So that's an interesting twist, which is what Student Body Right was planning on being uh, a nonprofit. But they are not ready to kind of announce what their launch and all that stuff is going to be. So they're sort of like, retooling behind the scenes so you'll see some version of boulevard or you know, some of the same people that were behind it uh emerge probably in the coming months um but last week we got two new ones that are that are there that are like exist um i've been talking to some of the people from the tommy group for a couple of months and we had a, po- a prominent poster on the peristyle kind of dropping tidbits about what this group was going to do and uh was there they had a kickoff event in Hollywood, uh, West Hollywood, um, Delilah Club. Have you ever been there, Chris? Nope. Yeah. Not cool enough to be to West Hollywood. Uh, it's, it's definitely a cool club. Um, and was supposed to be able to come. There was a few members of the media, like me, the LA Times, and like one or two other people. And uh, it was just, I think it was originally just going to be me and the LA Times and some people kind of came. But like that afternoon, it was supposed to start at six. We were told that you like Lincoln Riley didn't want us to come or or whatever it was. Didn't want us to to be there for some of the presentations, so we could be there for the mixer at the end to kind of get a feel for what it was like. So uh, a couple of us were there uh, for that. But you go in this club, you're waiting. You know, I got dressed up a little bit. I don't get dressed up very much. Put on jacket and everything. You go in there, Chris, and the place is packed. Um, so some of the names, you know, Keyshawn Johnson, he was actually speaking when I walked in, um, Alex Holmes, if you remember him, uh, a bunch of prominent SC alumni, boosters, businessmen, entrepreneurs that are part of this group. There's like six of them total and got to talk to a bunch of them, really nice guys. And, uh, yeah, but Lincoln Riley was there and the whole coaching staff was there. What were they rocking? Roy Manning in a suit? Uh, They were mostly, no, they were like polos and stuff 
Mm. Um, and the players, same kind of thing. Players there, the whole team, the whole team, like all of them. I mean, maybe there was a couple guys missing, but like pretty much the whole team was there. Guys had business cards; they were handing them out. It was like a networking event. But to see, like, and I thought I saw Mike Bone, and then I've had other people said he wasn't there. I'm not sure, but I thought Mike Bone might have been there. But you had the whole football team there. You had the whole staff there. To have USC really not back this other collective uh, before, I don't know how much more backing you could get than having Lincoln Riley and the entire team uh, show up there. So it was cool. I mean, I got to talk to Riley, got to talk to like Josh Henson, some of the other coaches, but to the players, see Shane Lee as soon as I walk in, he was cool to talk to. Um, I talked to Keenan Bar Keon Bars uh, for a little bit. Um, some of the new, you know, see some of the new guys around. How big is he? He's big. He's a uh, yeah. ranger plus. He's close. I think he's close to three hundred. Um, he's not like super tall, right? Like he's uh, defensive tackle. Doesn't need to be super right, right. Tall. I think he's like. I think it was like maybe a, I'm six three. He might have been like my height or six two or something like that. If I'm not mistaken, but um, it was a it was definitely a cool event. And just off the top, for people, people always want to know like. Every one of these USC collectives that we talk about, all of them, all of them, all of them are focused on the current players, the, the guys on the team, players on the roster. It is not, it is not, it is not, it is not focused on high school players. It's not focused on trying to pay a high school player to come to USC. I know that's what everyone wants. Enticement? To, they want enticement? Just to be clear, Student Body Right wasn't doing that. Boulevard wasn't doing that. The new Boulevard won't do it. Uh, Tommy Group's not doing it, and the new, the other one, Engage, we're going to talk about. They're not doing it. So I haven't talked to. I've talked to all these guys multiple times. No one's ever said they're going to pay a high school player. So if that's what you're waiting for, that's not um, what is happening. But there. did but anybody wink at you, high school players? This is more about. Um, and I, I've you know I've known Alex Holmes for a long time. You know, talking to him about some of this stuff. It's really about you know tapping into the Los Angeles market. And it was funny. I talked to Harvey Hyde yesterday on the show about this. Sometimes the NCAA would step in and say, hey, you can't do this. It's not fair. When he was a co coach at UNLV, he would have limos pick people up. And they said, you can't do that anymore. Uh, back in the day at USC, you could put football players on movie sets and you know they could be extras for things. And they said, you can't do that because it's not, you, you know, if you're in Tallahassee, you can't be on a movie set. So but that's the kind of stuff you can do. And I've actually remember talking to like, even when Brandon Sosna was around, like I, I I've done being extra a couple of times. It's a lot of fun. And like, that's kind of a thing that you could do if you're a football player, like, you know, your, your specialty being, Hey, we need big guys for this scene for whatever it is. Boom. You get a bunch of USC football players and they can come in there. And we we've seen, you know, guys be actors and stuff, but just being extras, being able to work on a movie scene, get some extra money from that. Tapping into you know, the, the entertainment capital of the world, tapping into the number one college football market in the country because, you know, New York City is the number one market, but it's not college football town. Um, all of that. I think that's what they're trying to do here. Market these players, tap them into corporate deals um, that would provide something for everyone, like the kind of the Beats headphone thing where everyone gets something. So it's not just about, hey, Caleb Williams, you're going to get this deal. It's more about trying to get all the players, uh, these kind of deals. So I thought it was really interesting. It was really impressive, the kind of show of support that was there for it. Um, but yeah, that's sort of my thoughts, if you have any, Chris. Let's cut the crap, Ryan. Yeah. Open bar? A good question. Uh, we had a host that was like their PR person, and she got us drinks. I don't know if it was open or not. She brought us – I only had one drink there because was, I was there for like an hour. But she ended up getting us a drink from the bar. I assume it was open. Question two. I don't know. Yeah. Food. Uh, I've heard the food there is really good. Uh, all they were doing was bringing around little appetizer. Yeah. What was drink. it? I didn't, I didn't partake, uh, but it didn't, it to be honest, what are we it wasn't, about here, wasn't that impressive. I what saw like a little about? pigs and blanket. I think maybe a little slider. The, the other event, I'm going to give them the food uh, edge, but, uh, yeah, I, maybe they had better food kind of going around, but I didn't have any. And just for when I, I, once I found out I couldn't get in there till eight, I ate before I got there. So, but I didn't see, I wasn't impressed by the food that I saw, if that's, if that's fair. Do you have a soundbite for the death of Boulevard? And if anyone ordered a shirt from Boulevard and didn't get their shirt, if you're in the chat, 
I'd love to hear about it. Yeah. I'd love to hear about it. That's my new favorite meme. Uh, and I feel bad for all of those uh, shows they were producing. The music show, the taco show. Gerard and I volunteered to do the taco show. Oh. In replace in replacement of them because I feel like we should just do that. Be a better show. I, yeah. Just do the show over tacos. I why not? If if anyone wants to be a new sponsor for the composite two star recruit, we could get like a Mexican sponsor. restaurant to sponsor that. That'd be great. Sure. Taco the the avenues are un. The avenues are endless. Is yeah, what I'm saying. But yeah, I think Boulevard dead, essentially. Uh, but some of the people that we were, I was talking to, that were running Boulevard, I'm still talking to them, and they're still doing stuff. So, you know, is it a re? But what you've known to be Boulevard isn't going to exist anymore. And I think some of the issue is like USC is still trying to figure out some of this. Uh, USC would like to have control, which you don't. There's other programs doing crazier things out there. Um, but I, what I like from the Tommy group was it was looking to take advantage of what's great around, you know, being in Los Angeles, being at USC. And they were trying to tap into that with big corporate deals and successful entrepreneurs, people that know what they're doing. And, uh, they're not, they're not a, a nonprofit. Um, and I think, I think they have some, you know, we'll, we'll try to get them to talk about this a little bit, but, uh, you know, some strong opinions on why that would be the case, but uh, it's also not a money-making venture for them. So, um, you know, I think this is something that they're probably putting their own money into to try to help USC football. And it's not really, they're getting a return on investment. And I think the same thing with people that are, um, you know, if you're donating to something like that, like, I, I don't know. I mean, what you get, what you get out of it is, you know, and you're helping the football team, not necessarily like getting a return. Now, if you get, uh, if you have a company and, and you're getting some of these guys to sponsor it and they post on their social media or something, yeah, you're, probably, you're getting something out of that with the advertising or whatever. But uh, I think these guys themselves that are running this, this is just like more of a labor of love that, than anything. And it looks like a lot of work. Um, but yeah, so it was cool to see that. They kicked off on Wednesday last week. And uh, we've been, I've been in contact to try to get those guys on the podcast. So hopefully we can do that soon. I'll follow up uh, again. Clearly a changing of the guard and USC's NIL space. But this right now is the best time to do it because you don't want to be doing this during the season. You don't want to be doing this in the heart of spring when you have kids coming on campus. You don't want to be doing this this summer because you're hosting official visitors, big recruiting weekends. It's good to have your NIL entity up and running. So now... They've officially sort of, you know, they're transitioning to Tommy Group. As you said, you know, it'll take a couple months to get things, you know, up and running, more information out there. But it should time up with, you know, USC hosting kids for the spring, hosting official visits, uh, hosting official visitors, excuse me, for yeah. the summer, and then just going to the season. So, oh, and plus with the second transfer portal window after spring. So this is the time to do this new, this NIL swap. So, yeah, the timing is is a good place. Yeah, in and the, uh, in the season. And you mentioned that second window, and I was I was messaging with uh, someone from the Peristyle, and a lot of people didn't realize we all thought it was May first to May fifteenth, but the NCAA changed it back in October during the season, so we really kind of got lost in the shuffle. But the second window is now April fifteenth to the end of the month, so April thirtieth or thirty first, whatever that is. Um, so right after USC spring football ends. You know, spring game happens is when the portal opens. So that'll be kind of interesting timing. Just a little a little side note there. Um, so that was Wednesday. I had to go up to West Hollywood. Uh, Thursday, I got to stay home. Uh, go over to Manhattan Beach. And uh, our old friend, Jake Olson, if you remember him. Uh, so his company, his, uh, you know, freshman roommate, uh, Daniel Hines, um, they uh, formed a company called Engage. It's letsengage.com. Speaking events, you know, tying in um, athletes to the public. And uh, unfortunately, like, you know, they they were getting that up and going and the pandemic hit. So it was sort of make things hard, but they're, they're you know, they're rolling again. Jake does a lot of motivational speaking and things like that. Uh, he's great whenever you have an event, but they were kind of the original you know, NIL, you know, Jake was like the original NIL athlete because, and, and Daniel was talking about this at, at the uh, event, but he was able to 
make money off of his name, image, and likeness. He's written books. He would go motivational speaking. And when he was, you know, he has this an amazing thing happen when he's at USC. He's a blind long snapper, gets into a game and snaps and uh, gets to actual play a football game as a blind person. So uh, I think ESPN had it like the number two moment in college football history or something like that. I mean, it's crazy. And he's able to go out there and make money off of that. And D Daniel's joke was like, even the NCAA couldn't come out and say, you know, to a blind cancer survivor, you're not allowed to make money off of that. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but he was doing NIL stuff early. And so what they're trying to do is uh, they're getting private donors and trying to do representation uh, for student athletes at USC football players, tying them into uh, the South Bay Quarterback Club, which is a nonprofit. So this is more of a nonprofit thing and doing events and getting, um, you know, financially compensated for that. So uh, this one's kind of interesting too, a little different approach uh, to what they're doing. And they had, this was at a private home in Manhattan Beach. Man, they had a sushi bar to die for. They had sushi chef there. It was really good. A uh, huge tower, like a charcuterie board tower. Great desserts. Open bar. You have my uh, attention. It was it was good. Yeah, I, I had a lot of sushi. <laughs> it was good. There so you go. I was just like, yeah, they were making it up there and stuff. So uh, good stuff. But yeah, so another one. So more NIL. Play, you know, how much confusion is it going to cause? I don't know. Like what? I, I'm just not sure. Um, but some of it just coming from USC sort of maybe, you know, putting so much into the boulevard that didn't really work. And now there's other things that are popping up. Um, but I, I feel like the market's going to sort of correct itself. And, you know, you see these, you know, hopefully they're all successful. They're, you know, the, the people I know it all of them, they're good. But I think USC needs it all. They need all the help they can get to get these players some deals and get them compensated and retain them. And also, you know, and see, have high school players see like, wow, this is what's going on at USC. I want to be a part of that. Even though if it's not like, here's a bag of money on my doorstep, if that makes sense. I would love a bag of money on my doorstep. Yeah. I gave you cupcakes on your doorstep. Mm -hmm. um, not least these cupcakes are filled with a thousand dollar bills, thousand dollar bills. Yo. Uh, yeah. So that's my sort of little NIL uh, piece. Any other thoughts? Give on yourself it, a round of applause. Yeah. Oh, uh, do I have that? I don't know if you I have must. Do I have it was on the last show. I did have or the applause. last board. Yeah, I think I I gotta get a new one. Um, I need, yeah, I gotta figure out the screwing up, thing. man. Did anyone in the comments not get a Boulevard shirt? Did we see any of that? Oh, any Boulevard shirts, people? Did you guys? I don't think too many people were coming on it, but I, there were a post on the Peristyle about like not getting their shirts, so. Yeah, because remember we said, I think we brought up um, when Travis Dye said, no blocky, no rocky. I think I had sent that over to the Boulevard people and they're like, yeah, that's great. We should make a shirt with that. But I don't know if that shirt ever happened or if that was. He, they uh, announced the shirt. They did, but it, yeah. it never. Wait, really... are you saying you started the idea to make that a shirt? I think people on the Peristyle were talking about it and I brought it up to oh. the Boulevard people. I don't know if they would have heard. So you about were the it. middle man. I was the middle that. man. Mm, mm. Okay, you just learned some history there, kids. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Yeah, of a shirt that probably didn't get delivered to everyone. So you should be proud of that. I do what I can. You, sh you should be proud of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, two NALs. That's cool. I think most schools have at least two or multiple ones. So yeah. There's going to be at not, least three. Not that unusual. And we'll see how it all plays out. I've already got one death of the bull, of Boulevard space. So, And then, I mean, basically student body right, too, before it even got going. Um, you know, we'll see. Maybe they maybe they come back. Maybe, um, maybe we shouldn't say died since someone literally actually like died Dale, in yeah. that situation. But Dale was a longtime poster. It was, yeah, it sucks to see him. Uh, it was That was terrible news to get. Um, about that, but he was really the driving force behind it. So it's kind of like the lost the momentum. Yeah. I mean, that was going to be plus USC wasn't really, you know, it was, you were fighting an uphill battle anyway, and he was kind of doing all the fighting now that USC seems to be more open to other ideas. Maybe, uh, those people will come back. I'll try to reach out and see if they will. But it, when you, you kind of lost your, the guy that was spearheading the charge and USC is kind of giving you flack the whole way. 
You're like, okay, why are we doing this? What's what's going on here? Because it's you know, again, you're getting involved in something like this. It's probably a labor of love. I don't think you're you're in it to make money. So, is it called the Tommy Group because of Tommy Trojan? I think so. Yeah. So there's, okay. I think some of the names, even the new Boulevard name, like trademarks come into play. So you're not going to say like Trojan NIL collected. Like you can't say things like that from what I've been told. So they have to come up with more innocuous names, you know, like the Tommy group, like Tommy's pretty generic, right? But you know what it's referring to. Um, so stuff that's not going to trigger the copyright infringement sure. is my guess. Um, yeah. Uh, real quick. Well, maybe not, not real quick. We'll see. Uh, I talked about this with Coach Hyde a little bit. I want to get your thoughts. The Pac-12, things aren't looking so good. Um, obviously, USC and UCLA like torpedoed it with uh, you know their announcement last June that they were going to leave for the Big Ten. Big Ten comes up with this huge TV deal. George Klyovkov, the commissioner, insinuates that UCLA would actually be better off staying in the Pac-12 then go into the Big Ten that they would actually make more money, which seemed ludicrous at the time, and it's obviously not true. Um, and it's getting worse. Um, he was promising schools 40 to 45 million stick around. We're seeing him show up at a SMU basketball game, uh, San Diego State's being talked about, some other schools. ESPN and Amazon look like to be the leaders for their tier one, tier two kind of rights things, but the markets changed. The Big 12 jumped ahead. We've talked about this all a little bit. As every week passes, Chris, it just seems to be kind of getting worse and worse. We had that vote of confidence from uh, the, the Pac-12 presidents. I don't know. I, they need to announce something soon, but it just doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of good news. And I know USC fans might not care because USC is leaving, but USC still lives in this neighborhood. You know, you're still in the Pac-12 neighborhood and if the Pac-12 disintegrates or you know guys leave or you know if Oregon or Washington join the Big Ten all of that impacts USC and the football team going forward you know recruiting that you know having uh, extra playing partners on the West Coast all that stuff so to me this is all really interesting but the I would say if you're if you're looking at the stock market kind of trends if you remember you know Keeley there's no stock neutral this is stock down right now if you're the Pac-12, and everyone's looking to see if Klafkoff can pull some sort of rabbit out of his hat, some, you know, pull something off that's going to make everyone happy. And if he's not able to, some of those schools I don't think are going to sign that grant of rights and lock them in, and then they could be poached elsewhere. I mean, maybe the best news for Klafkoff is that the you know Kevin Warren is leaving for uh, the Chicago uh, Bears, and they don't have a replacement for him yet. So are you really going to be adding teams if you don't have a commissioner right now? But the Big 12, Brett Yormark, he's super active. Um, he really put the screws to Klyovkov when he jumped ahead and signed an early deal that people thought was undervalued. Now it's not looking so undervalued. So I don't know. Any thoughts on that, Chris, of where the Pac-12 is right now and you know the, the aftermath of what USC and UCLA are kind of leaving in their wake? Sounds like they're down bad, as the kids would say. What is that? What was the term? Down bad. Down bad. Okay. Yeah. Meaning, you're you're struggling right now. Yeah. You're a little too thirsty. Shown at SMU games. I feel like they're only out to survival at this point. It's just to merge with the Big Twelve. Seems like the best option. You know. I mean, obviously, it means the end of the Pac-12, but yeah, it seems like the only viable thing to do to at least stay somewhat relevant in terms of, you know, the conferences, the the major conferences. Yeah. Form, get ahead and form as one of those perhaps future mega conferences along with the SEC and Big Ten. That seems like the best play to do. But can you swallow your pride to, say, take us, make us your own? I don't know. Yeah. Well, if you remember when Texas and Oklahoma left, like the Pac-12 could have raided the Big 12 and just wiped them out and did it. Stood, stood pat. I mean, hindsight 2020, but that was a mistake. Uh, I don't think the Pac-12 could control the fact that 
Oklahoma and Texas left before USC and UCLA opening up, you know, and, and Bob Bowlesley, like before he left, you know, he brought in the best programs he could, you know, the best group of five teams that he could and, and really helped to kind of stabilize things. And your mark, his power move was signing that, you know, uh, media rights deal early. But the power, if you looked at, we're going to talk about your power rankings for uh, USC positional groups. If you're looking at the power five power rankings, you know, SEC and Big Big Ten up here, the Pac-12 was ahead of the Big 12 when Texas and Oklahoma left for sure. You know, and the ACC signed that really long deal. So they had some stability, but they just didn't have, you know, it wasn't, there's, it's not Clemson, Florida State, Miami. They're not happy with the deal that they have, but there's stability there. The Pac-12 had the stability and the, the upcoming media rights deal. They were on, you know, they could have taken teams from the Big 12. Well, that power shifted. Like the Big 12 is definitely ahead of the Pac-12 now, not just for basketball. But I mean, basketball, they're, a, they're the best conference in America right now, but they're in a much better position uh, than the Pac-12. And uh, from what, you know, Brett Yormark said on the uh, uh, Wilner and Canzano podcast is that they all those schools have signed their grant of rights. So, the Pac-12 can't go in and take a Houston or a BYU or anything at this point, even if they wanted to. So the best available is like a San Diego State or, nice. or an SMU, you know? So that's uh, the power shifted. So your point being swallowing your pride, when you go into these negotiations or whatever, the Pac-12 could have done this six months ago and been in a very different position than they are now. Now it's more of a groveling kind of thing like hey we need this and you know, it might be beneficial for the big 12 too I, it, it would have to be otherwise they wouldn't do it and maybe it's a way you could try to compete with the sec and the and the big 10 you're not gonna have the big brands but you would have a 20 team or whatever league like a huge league um 24 team or something like that but yeah i, I think you're right i think best case scenario for the pac-12 right now unless somehow they can pull out a, a great deal is, is some sort of merger with the big 12. And yeah, we've been talking about the death of Boulevard again, just the death of the PAC 12, the slow spiral towards the end. But I mean, it would take a miracle at this point. It feels like to get a really, really good TV deal and not go into extinction. So the, the the merger thing seems like the only sustainable path for them, even though it means you know there be something completely different than what their own they're they're not their own thing anymore. They're they're part of something bigger. So yeah, I mean they can still be like the West Division of whatever the the whatever that Big Twelve conference would look like if they merge. But yeah, it's not a great spot to be in. Is what I'm. I think that's what I iterated last week. Yeah, it's just not not the spot you want to be in. There are some really interesting rumors. I don't know if you follow some of these accounts that tweet stuff that seem to know what they're talking about with some of the inside scoop of what's going on here. But and I, I know Jason Shear, who does Wildcat Authority, um, he was reporting uh, earlier today or yesterday that San Diego State more people are on board, more of the presidents are on board in the Pac-12 of adding San Diego State, but. There's less, uh, you know, less of a positive reception for SMU. We're hearing like Cal and Stanford really aren't into you know, adding these kind of teams. Um, you know, the the statement they put out, it seemed like everyone was on the same page. But it, from what you're hearing behind the scenes, that doesn't seem to be the case. So, you know, if you're USC, yeah, could you be sitting on your couch just eating popcorn, kind of watching uh, what happens? Yeah, you got one more football season. Uh, in this conference and going forward, but it will be interesting to see what happens. And I think, I don't know what you think the best thing, I think the best thing for USC would probably be um, that the Pac-10, you know, Pac-10 stays together and you sort of leave like the, I mean, essentially leaving Oregon behind because Oregon's been the team that's hurt you the most on the recruiting front. And you can kind of like separate yourself. Like you can be, you're in another league. Uh, if Oregon ends up joining the big 10, then you could see, you know, them maybe they'll have a lot more success or continue to have success uh, recruiting Southern California. Um, but if USC is able to kind of separate itself, you're kind of eliminating a rival in a sense. So um, it could be a benefit having Oregon or Washington or whatever, you know, Cal Stanford in the Big Ten that you are have some travel partners. 
But I think if you're USC, you'd probably rather have Cal Stanford in the Big Ten than Oregon, Washington. I don't know what you think. I think for USC fans, just looking at it from USC's perspective, it's the best thing is whatever hurts Oregon the most, yeah. which would be them staying the Pac-10 staying united, or just them staying in that that conference, which would be the weakest of the Power Fives by a good good amount of margin without yeah. USC and UCLA. So that would be the best thing for USC fans is if Oregon gets stuck behind in the Pac-10 and does not move up to a high-rise uh, conference, say the SEC or you know the Big Ten, whatever. So yeah. that, I think, is what would make USC fans the most happy. And I think it's a testament to how successful Oregon's been recruiting Southern California. And a lot of it was USC's own incompetence. Um, and and now I think NIL is a big part of it. Um, so there's, you got to give Oregon credit. And this is sort of, a, if, if USC pulls this off, it's like a power move. Like, all right, well, you know, and I think USC will be fine, you know, long-term. They ha they're, they're not figuring out their NIL stuff as quickly as some of the other schools are, um, you know, and, and Oregon's been able to do that with, you know, Phil Knight and Mega Boosters and things like that. Um, but, you know, you're essentially, you know, you'll now be playing like NFL football. Um, you're, you're in the major leagues. You're, you're in the Premier League. And if, you know, if, if Oregon and Washington get left behind, they're kind of relegated to whatever. I don't know what the, the league below that is. But um, which I think Oregon can still have a lot of success, but it's going to be a lot harder um, to say, hey, let's go to Oregon. You're not playing in the same conference as USC anymore. Now you're playing in a league down. And it's, it, it, there's going to be a clear, you know, line of delineation. Like you're going to be clearly in a lower league. So I think Oregon and Washington are going to try like, like hell to get, you know, not be left behind. And this is, uh, it's a tall order for Klyovkov, uh going forward. So we'll see. Yeah, would you rather play for Oregon playing against, Arizona on the VHS channel <laughs> or would you rather be at USC versus Ohio State primetime on Fox yeah, yeah like you know uh yeah like you can watch us play uh, Oregon State on Amazon Prime or yeah uh you know Fox uh big noon kickoff will be USC Ohio State which you know they're going to be playing every year like USC and Ohio State's going to be playing every year yeah um, yeah, so that's a that's a game changer. Um, so that's I know some fans don't care. I'm very curious how this all you know pans out. We're going to continue to do our podcast of champions, me and David Woods, until we're not. So I don't know what's going to happen. We have to see what happens with the Pac-12. But we're we going to merge with a Big Twelve uh, podcast. We could <laughs> just just I love that. just for the set the groundwork. Like if that happens, you should just do that. And then like wait, hey, these two podcasts are joining. You, your conferences should join too. Yeah, we we would set the. Uh, I love it. We we could like set the bar. Right, this is what you should be doing. Uh, all right. Why don't we take a quick break and we'll come back and we want to go through Chris's um, power rankings for the position groups uh, for USC and we'll get to uh, some of the questions you guys had in the chat. Back in a minute. All right, we're back here on the Peristyle Podcast. Always great talking with uh, Chris Trevino. I know he's is it, dying. It is. Is it? He's dying to eat one of those cupcakes. Maybe not. I I'm going to shove one in my mouth at the end. Are you really? Yeah. I want to get your honest opinion about it, too. So sure. Maybe you could do it at the end. You could do it, like, on the air. And I'm going to do it on the air. I'm going to do it in one bite. Uh, ooh. How many uh, degenerates are watching? We got... How many degenerates are watching right now? Uh, 100... 45, something like that. Not you, bad. Degenerates. Why are you I'm discouraging not... people from watching us live? Because that's that? less people watching me live. You'd Oh, you want less people watching you live. Yes. You've come a long way. Do you remember? We, do, oh, should we tell the story? Not far enough. Like when on his birthday, I tweeted out that. Uh, so if you guys remember in 2014, USCFootball.com uh, joined Scout.com. 2014? 2014, Scout. Oh, Scout. Yeah. Wait. So I was with Rivals for uh, like 13 years. Uh, we left and joined Scout. And 
Um, their presence on the West Coast was great. Their management wasn't it got worse, and uh, you know, luckily for us, two four seven end up buying Scout, and uh, I probably would have went there anyway, but it was it, it worked out well. Chris was already at twenty four seven Sports, running the USC site. This wasn't twenty fourteen though. Right? This is in twenty seventeen. Okay, is when this happened. Yeah, and so, you know, Chris is you know doing a great job reporting, kind of a quiet guy. Don't lie. Yeah, you're doing you're doing a great job, and. You know, we are the biggest site on the West Coast, and we're merging with Chris's site. So, I'm very happy. Fight on 247, shout out. Fight on 247. See the uh, original Fight on 247ers. Yeah. Uh, very happy that 24-7 Sports was, like, keeping Chris on. I definitely wanted to be part of the team. But I hadn't really talked to him. He was kind of a quiet guy. And we were sitting, I think, like, eating a, a meal before one of the USC basketball games. And I go over, sit next to Chris, and like, <laughs> Hey, I guess we're going to be working together kind of thing. So that was our initial conversation. And uh, and now we're here. And now you get to have a conversation with me every Tuesday. <laughs> Much to the, in front of 140 people. Yeah. Much to the delight of myself. <laughs> Power ranking of every position group. Okay. Strongest to weakest, in my point of view, take into account a bunch of factors, uh, you know, production lost. Returning production, incoming talent to that room, uh, returning starters, you know, fresh faces, things like that. So expectations, take all that into account and then, you know, spit them out where I see them. And this is the first volume. I'll do one after spring. I'll do one going into fall camp. And then we'll do a final one going into the 2023 season. So this is the first iteration uh, I thought it it there's one part where people were debating the most, but for the most part, I feel like everyone agreed with the list. But yeah, that's what I got. I don't know where you want me to start. Um, this was a VIP piece, so I'm not going to go in super detail. But right. we'll go through the we'll go through the list for sure, and then Ryan can pick apart what he doesn't like or does. No, like. I mean I I like it. Like um, you, the one of the things up, up the top. I mean you know, the specialists, do you think it should be higher? Do you think there's going to be more? I mean, USC had some special teams blunders, but is it more about the kickers and stuff? And you're not as worried about that uh, with the additions that they've had. You think the special should be higher, right? So they're 10 right now yeah. out of 11. They were 11 last year. All three new starters, Aiden Sleep Dalton, Dennis Lynch, uh, who we figured would have been Alex Stathouse at that point. And then a new yeah. long snapper. So all three spots were up for grabs. This year, more stability. Dennis Lynch presumably going to be starting again or at least be the favorite yeah. after a year. Uh, Jack Sarasante, you know, he's back as the long snapper. And then you got the best Pac-12 snap – or excuse me, punter in the uh, in the conference, Yeah, Eddie Chaplitsky. So that's a big pickup. At least gets him out of the basement. Chaplicky, I think. Chaplicky, Chaplicky. Yeah, there's no S in there, but. So, but are they better than others? Maybe I. I just don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um. Where's what's what was Love the, the dead air? What was one? What was causing the most controversy? Uh, six and seven. Okay. So the six, safeties. Safeties and cornerbacks. Corners. Just people thought that they should be flipped. Cornerbacks should be above the safeties. Okay. I went with the safeties personally just because they have an All-American returning in that room, Kalen Bullock. They have multiple players with a bunch of starts. Max Williams was a starter last season. Brian Sh Bryson Shaw was a starter at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Got more playing time at the end of the year. He was banged up. For the first part, Latrell McCutcheon played in some big games. Jalen Smith was a starter for a while before he got injured. So a lot of returning production. You got a star in that room in Kalen Bullock. And then just to go on top of that, I think you got another star coming in. And that's Zion Branch, who, you know, I think would have been a difference maker down the line last year. Top 50 prospect, tore his knee up in, in summer workouts. 
He's coming back six foot one, 200 pounds, great athlete, physically a specimen. He's going to up the athleticism in that room by a good margin. And that was an area they really struggled in, the safeties. And, you know, Jalen Smith's back healthy. He is an athlete. You know, you got Christian Pierce, a true freshman early enrollee, six foot three, 190 pounds, can lay the hammer and is really good, uh, you know, as a free safety. Reminds me a little bit of Kalen Bullock. You know, Kalen's obviously, he's, he's, Christian Pierce is a little more physically developed than Sticks was coming out of high school, but same long, rangy, can make plays in the air uh, and can hit. So I like him. He's early enrollee. Get to see what he gets to do in the spring. Uh, don't sleep on Fabian Ross, redshirt freshman from last season. Uh, Malachi Crawford, who was a cornerback, but he, when we would talk to him on the trail, he was being recruited to play multiple positions. Can come up, play nickel, can play in the free safety. So also six foot three. We'll see what he does if they move him around in spring camp or if he just focuses on one spot. But all those things combined, I know the safeties did not play well towards the end of the year, but who did on the defense? You know what I'm saying? A lot of them did not play great, but I still am willing to kind of wipe the slate clean. Year two, some growth, some development, some physical development. We'll see what it looks like. And I also think a lot of people are just really hating on the safeties as a whole, just because Alex Grinch's name is tied to them. And obviously, Alex Grinch is the most hated man in USC football right now. <laughs> so obviously his position group is going to get, uh, excuse me, shit on a lot harder than any position group on this team. Yeah. So I know some people will be like, put him at 11. No, I'm not going to put him at 11. So yeah, those are my rationale for putting the cornerbacks uh, below the safeties. And I like the cornerback room. You know, they have four guys that can start between Christian Roland Wallace Damani Jackson, former five-star. Yeah. Uh, Jacoby Covington, who I'm really excited to see going into the spring. I think he developed a lot towards the end of the year. Didn't play as much as the coaches wanted him to early. That was more so on him, you know, not putting himself in a position to be like, hey, I need to be on the field. Right. That happened at the end. Sierra Wright was a starter. Kind of became a, a two-way starting position with him and Jacoby in that rotation. So you hope Sierra takes another step forward in development like he did from – uh, 2021 to 2022, and yeah, you have four guys who are capable of starting. Couple dark horse guy, double couple of dark horse guys as well. Prophet Brown, uh, Josh Jackson, who was hurt all all year, so I think the room is a little bit deeper. But you lose one of the best cornerbacks in the country, one of the best cornerbacks in the Pac-12, and Makai Blackman. You lose yeah. your true number one. You don't have a clear cut number one. And to be fair, coming into the season, Makai Blackman wasn't considered like the guy, you know, they were, realize how we, we were, we were anointing him as he's probably going to, he's the most experienced guy in that room. He's probably going to have to be the number one made a lot of plays in spring, you know, Lincoln Riley praised him up and down spring camp being one of their best defensive playmakers period. And then he had the ankle injury and, you know, kind of missed the rest of spring, but that was enough to be like, okay, Makai Blackman will pencil him in, pencil him in as a starter and that number one guy. Again, it wasn't like that coming in. We still don't, and we don't have that clarity coming in for the cornerback room. Christian Roland Wallace, multiple years of starters. You can add up everyone's starts in that room, and they don't touch Christian Christian Roland Wallace's starts. Can he be that number one guy? Sure. I I, I think a lot of fans hope for. You know, he's got the experience. He's a he's a good prospect. Uh, big, fast. You know, they like what he's what they saw on tape. But he's got to be the guy. If, if he's if he's going to make that jump, you know, he's never made an all, all pack 12 list. Blackman, at least, was a third team selection by pro, pro Football Focus. Yeah. His final season at Colorado and an honorable mention. I think all Christian Roland Wallace has made is like all academic. Uh, but, you know, he's been th years, three years of starter. Experience is valuable. Damani Jackson is the big one. Everyone wants to be see the guy, but I need him to be healthy. I need him to stay on the field, see him on the field for multiple weeks at a time. This is a big spring camp for him. You know, six foot one, 190, can run a 10 4. Those guys don't grow on trees. You know, those guys are made in labs. So he looked good when I saw him at the uh, Tommy Group event. He was, he was chatting. I think it was with Dante Williams, but just saw him like, he just looked like a solid. He's like, he's put together. He's a guy. Yeah. You look at him and he's yeah. like, that's a dude. Like yeah. that, I think, 
I think the ideal case is is Damani wins a starting job and then the other guy on the other side is maybe the guy you lean on more as being the number one, whether that's Christian Roland Wallace or Jacoby Covington, who's a big corner as well, six foot one. One of those guys is the the guy early. And then, you know, by midseason, you know, you start to see Damani really come into his own using that five star talent. And he is becoming the number one guy. Yeah. You know, remember he's still young. He is just going to be a sophomore, only played in seven games last year, did not play a senior year due to an injury, did not do spring camp last year due to rehab. So he's still got to shake off that rust. So this is a big spring camp for him and it can really get him on the right foot moving forward. But four guys capable of starting that spot. We just need someone to grab that role for 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 that quarterback room and be the number one guy because there will be some growing pains losing a number one cornerback. Yeah. Um, one of the groups that, you know, probably underperformed, you could say, last year were the inside linebackers. You got them pretty high. Um, I do. I'm a big believer okay. in that room. Mason Cobb and Gentry being healthy. I think across the board, a lot of changes. But when you look at it on paper, they're deeper, okay. they're more athletic, and they're much more experienced. Because you have Gentry, obviously the ankle surgery that he underwent, he's going to be missing spring camp. Yeah, uh, We reported on that last week. And that came out, you know, he posted on Instagram. So he's not going to be in the spring, which is okay, because that's going to get more reps for the young guys who are going to be probably the favorites for that Mike position. I don't know if Eric Gentry is going to play Mike again because, you know, you can move him back to a more natural position instead of the Mike backer. But you have Mason Cobb, nearly 100 tackles last year, Mike experience. Tackett Curtis, the legend of Tackett Curtis, you know, the expectations for him just seem to be growing day by day by day. You know, people already want him in the 55 jersey. So spring is going to be big for him. He's going to get the opportunity to have a lot of reps with Gentry gone. You know, Shane Lee, team captain, veteran, you know, I believe was second on the team in tackles last year. Not as athletically gifted as those other guys, but still a really good leader and, you know, a, a guy you can de depend on who has starts and whatnot. But you also have Rajon Davis, who people are excited for after that Cotton Bowl performance. We'll see if he can, you know, push a little more in spring camp. Then you potentially have two more guys who are young that can fill out the the depth of that room, Garrison Madden, you know, and Carson Tabarucci, who didn't play last year due to injury. Those guys still need more development, but if they're getting more scout team reps, you know, maybe they can be special teams guys, but at least you have more uh, athleticism uh, at that position. Carson could have been a running back in college. He played both ways in high school, and then Garrison Madden, you know, a track guy, has really good speed, and he just needs more you know, wait on his frame. We'll see what he looks like coming out of a f first full off season. But overall, I just really like the athleticism of that room. It's it's much improved from last season. And they got some guys in there. You know, Tackett Curtis, Mason Cobb, Eric Gentry, Shane Lee, Rajon Davis. They got some guys in there that are good. And yes, but the big point is they need to be better than they were last year. The consistency wasn't up to par. I think they got grinded down a lot by the end of the year just because they didn't have enough bodies injuries you know to Gentry to Raylan Goforth to Shane Lee to Asibi Nomura they got they got beat up and I think that you could see that at the end of the season so they need to be more durable for the whole year and that helps when you're deeper yeah no, I agree with you Chris um he's got the the quarterbacks number one duh with uh, Caleb Williams Heisman Trophy winner. But go check it out over at uscfootball.com. If you're not a subscriber, you can do it for a buck, which is great. Or 30% off if you want to do an annual membership. It's an awesome deal. And you can get Paramount Plus and stream stuff like Top Gun, Maverick, and uh, all the streaming uh, options they have there. So you can get like free TV if you just sign up for uscfootball.com. So it's pretty cool uh, if you want to go over and do that. If you're watching live on YouTube, please smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate that as well. Uh, Got to get to some questions, and we'll uh, we'll we'll call this one. Uh, let's go first up. Looks like uh, Devon. Do you guys think the defense will be better this year? Simple to the point. I do, but 
I still want to see what they bring in and the transfer portal window defensive tackle wise. They still need more defensive lineman bodies, interior guys. They need more interior guys. So the big the second portal will be important for them to at least get, I would say, two guys that can be impact guys, not, you know, down the line reserves. They need guys who can help and play now. So I do think they're gonna be better, but they still they need to address that defensive tackle spot, interior defensive line. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. I'm prepping which one I'm going to eat at the end here. You prepare? Okay. Yeah, just... You can like eat while we're watching. No, no. Too. Uh, Cameron, uh, the Big Ten talked about a 3-6-6 three, three, six, six conference matchup format. Who would be the three locked rival teams for USC in the Big Ten? My prediction, UCLA, Nebraska, and Northwestern. Um, no, no way. Uh, Cameron, so actually our buddy Andy Staples did this exercise uh, on his show. Was that you saying no way or is that a comment? It's me saying oh, no okay. way. Um, I think... You didn't sign up. You didn't bring USC into the Big Ten so they could play Northwestern every year. You brought them in to play Ohio State and Michigan and Penn State. So I think UCLA, duh, Ohio State, and I think they they came up with either Penn State or Wisconsin or something like that. So I think it would probably be somewhere in that range more than uh, – but I, I think Ohio State would the be – Nebraska's not a bad draw. They're a blue blood. And that's actually a little bit closer. I don't mind the Nebraska one, but I think Ohio State would be involved. Like if sure, I had to you pick, need one of the big boys. Yeah, you have to have a big boy. You can't have and and Nebraska's not considered a big boy. Um yet. We'll see. Uh you like that? You gonna you're gonna I take just, a bite or no? No, no I'm, I told you I'm gonna do it in one bite at the end. Oh nice. Okay. I'm smelling it. Uh let's see. Smelling salts. Question. Well, Kalen Bullock. Bulk up and get more formidable on tackling via the workouts. He was bigger from 2021 to 2022. Yeah. Definitely saw a little bit more muscle on him. So I haven't seen him in any of the workout stuff. So we'll see what that looks like. I mean, maybe you saw him at the Tommy group event, but I'm expecting a little bit more mass on him. But again, he's a very unique body type with that. His, his name is Sticks for God's sakes, but he yeah. does need to add some more muscle. Yeah. So I think he will have a little more muscle, like he did from 2021 to 2022. So, I mean, I don't think he's he's not going to be like 30 pounds bigger or anything like that. But if he's 10 pounds bigger, you know, that's a that's a big that's a big thing. That's significant. I would say I would agree with you there. Howell, um, which four players would be on your USC Mount Rushmore? Hope you guys had a good Presidents Day weekend. Thanks. That's really tough when you have eight guys won the Heisman, you know, and that's not even talking about um, any defensive players, you know. I feel like we did this question before. We might have, yeah. Well, Reggie's got to be on there. I think Reggie's on there. I think Reggie's got to be on there. I think. I mean. I have to, to put Caleb Williams on there. To be honest, like, he's probably got to be on there, which is insane. Well, just for me personally. Yeah. I got to put a DMV guy. His, his on there, Caleb Williams was at both of those events, and uh, I ended up talking to his dad for a little while. And uh, I forgot I brought up the story about you coaching him swimming. You forgot to bring it up? No, I did bring it oh. up. I forgot that I mentioned that. But so he it's like talent wise, he would have to be on there. But if it depends on what you're saying, is this accomplishments in college? Is this overall football accomplishments? Is it? He just said ours. We could do whatever we want. Yeah. Like talent, wise let's just do talent. Like who are the most talented people you've seen? Like oh, I think Reggie. Reggie and Caleb will probably be on there. And I mean, then, Troy, or like a Ronnie Lott or something, or a, I mean, but even like an Anthony Munoz wasn't like he was hurt a lot in college, but talent wise, he was as up there as anybody. Like a. Look, everyone's going to be mad at whatever list we come up with. Yeah, these are tough. Um, but yeah. I think Troy's on mine. How many are on the Rock Mushroom? Four? Four. Four. <laughs> and I'll say Junior Seau. Wow, yeah. I mean, you could, you know. Reggie, could. Caleb, Troy, uh, Junior. That's my list. Shit on it all you want. <laughs> okay. But it's my list. Your buddy. Hey, at least I made the list, yeah. Ryan. You didn't even give your fourth. Uh, I, yeah, I'll put Ronnie Lott. 
Okay. And Anthony Munoz on there. Okay. Um, Eddie, how does it work with headcount for the spring? Uh, Ethan White, the kaboom, can join the team because they have to open up a spot for him. And Kobe Pepe is still working out with the team. Odd. Yeah, I think you're still allowed if you're in the transfer portal to be. Yeah. I think it's at the discretion of the coaching staff. Yeah. So that's still kosher. We'll see if he comes out and like actually practices. Yeah, we'll see. But there's the the it rolls over for the new roster like at the end of I think it's the end of July or beginning of July end of July like in that time frame. So at that point, if you're on the team and you're on scholarship, you are on scholarship for the whole year and going forward. So that's when they kind of have to have everything sort of settled. Also, Eddie, I need to give you this Trader Joe's gift card. So oh yeah, we have to meet up or just send me your address. Yeah. I also need Moneybags Manford's address. So if Moneybags Manford is listening. So did it. Yeah. Also, Renee on the Peristyle, r- r- hit me back so I can send you this shirt. Those are my ha- uh, shop, those are my shop or uh, housekeeping things I needed to. Uh, nice. Uh, Walker, what happened with the Pac-12 payback slash corruption issue? So this was um, Comcast that they were overcharged for like 10 years or they ch- overcharged Comcast for like 10 years or were the overpaid. The Pac-12? The Pac-12 was. So basically they owe 50 million bucks. That's another thing that's sort of hanging over the Pac-12's head is it's not just like you got to come up with money, but you owe money too. Um, you know, with Texas and Oklahoma – get to leave the uh, Big 12 early and they have to leave like $100 million on the table. But this is sort of like, you know, you get to leave and then, you know, you don't have to pay anything, but you're not going to get paid the last $100 million, whatever it is. But for the Pac-12, they still owe $50 million to Comcast throughout this. So that's kind of a, that's another debt that you have to pay. Um, Eddie again says, if the Big 10 is moving, oh wait, is that, do we ever have this one? Oh, so he, I think it was the same kind of question. Two more permanent opponents. He says the the guess is Nebraska with either Rutgers or Maryland. Why are these people like putting terrible? Yeah, sorry, Eddie. We already kind of answered that, but um, why terrible? Why would you pick like like Maryland? Like, are they even going to be? Are they going to get dropped, Chris? Is that what you're hearing? Or are they they're still be in the Big Ten? <laughs> you would you would love to see Maryland in there. I know. Sure, but you're going to have to put Ohio State. Like that's you know. I kind of am like Nebraska would be good. I kind of think UCLA is going to get like Michigan and Nebraska. Mm. And then USC gets like, you know, Ohio State. State and like Penn State or something. But um, HR Pickett stuff, who had some great stuff in the chat, by the way. Um, and that's a great name too. Which offensive line players transfer out after the spring? Well, if you read the war room, I gave you one player that's uh, not on the roster anymore. Uh, but will there be other transfers? Yeah, I think there'll be at least one more. You think one more? Yeah. I don't know what, like, a guy like Andrews to work. Like, I don't know what to make of him going, I guess, for the season, you know, six foot seven, legit six foot seven, and probably 310 pounds. Doesn't have the athleticism to play offensive tackle. That's why he was shifted inside to guard. I think he has potential, but he was super raw coming into USC. Remember, he's part of that yeah. 2020 class, I believe. So, but, but I've seen him like staying after after practice to you know work on his his technique and stuff. So it seems like he's working, but I just don't know where he fits for the future moving. And maybe they just keep him on, you know, to be a scout team guy because you still need scout team guys to fill out. And I'm sure the some of the freshman class coming in will make up that scout team offensive line. But I don't know. It seems like maybe a guy they can keep around to develop and see what comes out at the other end. Yeah. But also I would not be shocked if maybe he moved on after, after spring, but we'll see. So that that's the name I'm just putting out there. Yeah. Uh, West Texas, Mike, I put it up already, but he said, uh, he said, that's what we're hearing about Maryland fu- future Mac program. So I uh, yeah, maybe they're going to get dropped. We'll see. I don't know, Chris, that's I'm not at least according to West Texas. And my Mike. birthday month. Yeah. And that's my true. Birthday that's month. kind of disrespectful. I would say, and for there's a lot of people commenting about this. Well, they're, they're closer or whatever. Like there's one reason Like, why does the big 10 have a huge, huge, huge TV contract? It's because now they have way better inventory. They don't, you know, they're not selling USC Rutgers. 
They're selling USC, Ohio State. That might be the first game of 2024. Like USC opens with LSU. The first conference game might be like Ohio State coming to the Coliseum like in week three or four or something. Like I could totally see something like that happening. You want those games that are get four, five, six, seven million viewers. And it's going to be way better if you have USC playing Ohio State every year. And the good thing is, you know, people talk about easier schedule. I mean, the good thing is with the expanded playoff at the same time, USC and Ohio State, the loser can still make the playoff. You know, like if they're both really good and one team has to win, it's going to get a huge number, big rating, and that's what you want. And that's great. But the loser, if they still win a whole bunch of games, they can still make the playoff. So it's not going to be like, oh, you have to, you can't play USC and Ohio State because they're going to eliminate each other. Like with the expanded playoffs, that's not the case. Um, millionaire mindset. Is there a way Anthony Lucas can start and how good is he? And then he also wants to know which defensive line transfer will make the most impact. Anthony Lucas. Anthony Lucas, I think would be the and, right number. I'm right. Call. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He can start. You know, I think you're already like sort of penciling him in to kind of be not saying he's going to lead the nation in sacks like two, two below two, but that's the kind of guy you use like that. That's the guy you move around. We'll have to see how big he is. You know, we talk about on composite two star recruits plug about his inner Bubba. You know, he's a defensive end, but yeah. you know, you think Gerard has mentioned where he thinks his money, his real money to be made for the next level is as a three technique moving inside. So if you know he's six foot six, if he you know gets to to three hundred, you know, he could be a monster at, at three technique. But we'll have to see where they, if they keep him on the edge, they rush him outside, you know, like we mentioned, USC needs more interior. So as if you're a USC fan, you hope, you know, he's he's embracing that inner bubba and bulking up to play more interior. So we'll see what that looks like, but absolutely that should be a guy you, you know, kind of loosely pencil in as a starter and his impact as a former five guard, like I said, five star, excuse me, six foot six, you know, 275 pounds, whatever, just a freak athlete. And yeah, they need more guys like that uh, in the program right. in general, not necessarily for the season, but just get more guys like that. Yeah. the, I mean, he can change a lot, I think is one you know, impact player just being, if he's a stud on that defensive line, I think that could change a whole lot for this team for 2023. So. But remember, he's just uh, still like a freshman. Yeah. You know, he's still young, only played, I think, like seven games or something. Not that many. Yeah. Not that many. Still really young. So he'll have growing pains, but supremely talented. But yeah, can be a starter. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up there. We had a great show. Uh, if you're watching the live stream, please get in there and smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Share it on your social media. Tell a friend. And uh, if you're not, go back and uh, check out our YouTube. Um, and uh, I hope they have a lot of fun. You can see some visuals with me and Chris chatting. And of course, you know, you're walking through the park or going for a run on the beach, listening to the podcast. We love that as well. You're at the gym, wherever you're doing. Um, we appreciate all the uh, listenership, all the feedback we get, the calls, the emails, the texts, and of course, the live chat. Chris is getting ready, if you're not watching live, to uh, just pound, just absolutely go to town. Do you know the Heimlich? <laughs> I, I can I help. Get it in. I can help. Yeah. Um, sweet. All right. Well, that is going to wrap things up. Hope you guys enjoyed the show, and we will talk to you next time. Mm. <laughs>